Hey, it's Turbo from Rock 100.5 KATT, the legendary Harry Cat, sitting here with legendary frontman and guitarist of Megadeth, Dave Mustaine. Dave, how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. The legendary Harry Cat, I like that. Yeah, yeah, we keep it hairy out there. So, uh, not your first Rock, Oklahoma. You guys were here a couple of years ago. Talk to me about the experience. Well, that's... Uh when you play festivals like this in the states, they're few and far between. They're starting to be more um, nowadays, but back, you know, last few years they weren't happening. So they really made a great impression on us. And then I remember this and a couple other ones, a big one in Ohio, and they they made a big impression on me because you get to see that the idea of festivals, based on the European theme, uh, theme is uh, taking on here. So that's really great. I hate going to festivals where every band's exactly the same. It's sure. so boring. Right, right. Now, uh, when it comes to the new record, Dystopia, talk to me about that. It's been out for a little while now. You've uh, got to, you know, hear some response on it. You know, what do you feel like the feedback's like? The feedback's been great. Uh, Didn't expect it to be that good. We we, we obviously wanted the record to be the best we can make it. But, you know, you, you, I think if you set your expectations realistically, you know, then you're going to be happy with whatever the results are. And for us, the results have been staggering. We got a, a... notification a couple of weeks ago that in the first three months we'd outperformed their year performance guidelines that they wanted for the record so you know we did four times the pace that they expected which is great sure you're talking about uh you know uh the music industry right now in regards to uh, you know album sales and stuff like that now in the past with some of your labels you've been a little bit critical about uh the lack of promotion that uh, some of the labels put into it what's your relationship with your current label now well i think that's the that's like that with any artist with any label they they just you know they they're going to invest in whatever's successful and and you know it's real easy for a label to shift over to another band because you know it's just another band for a band this is your life you know and and i'm very passionate about what i do and i'm very critical about the people that i work with if i'm working harder than they are then you know there's something wrong you know if we're all working equally as hard to make something happen then it's going to happen you're a seasoned veteran uh, veteran of uh, the metal community, if you will, uh, and in the past, uh, you've had uh, some health issues, whether it be like you, know, you had some issues with your spine, you had some issues with your, your uh, arm. Uh, talk to me now about like where Dave Mustaine is at as far as overall health. You feeling good and strong? Hands are still kind of, you can see how they're kind of knotty. Sure. You know, they're, 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 this one's uh, numb. Right down the middle of that one is numb. That side's alive, that side's not. So that's okay. Uh, you know, as far as like, us being able to go out and headbang like I used to, having a right. blade in my neck made sure. it, it makes it a little different. The the foreign thing inside of my vocal box area there has changed my voice a little bit. Right. Not, not a lot, but a little bit, so it makes it a little harder to sing. And But, you know... I'm not going to give up. I'll try my best to make it sound right. Well, no, I, I thought it was kind of inspiring. Uh, we know at one point when you were having the nerve uh, damage in, in your hand, and on your fret hand nonetheless, uh, you had kind of decided maybe uh, Megadeth was done. And uh, you went through and just powered through and uh, I did a lot of therapy and came back. Yeah. What do you do now to like keep it up? I mean, is there anything special that you have to do? Exercises, medicines, anything? Yeah, it's really weird because after a while when you have an injury of some sorts, you tend to favor that side. So I have to force myself to use my left hand more than my right hand doing things because naturally you know you, you use your left hand as, a, as a, an aid to your right hand if you're right-handed but when you have an injury like that you just pretty much stop using it and I found myself really having to force myself to unscrew stuff do it slowly do it backwards and forwards and stuff because it's, it's right here on this part of my hand right there okay to do it on the other side oh wow yeah so that's what happened when the uh, muscle went away sure it's kind of like atrophy to it talking to the muscle and the muscle stopped flexing and extending so it atrophied so or atrophied whatever so that, that's what my goal is is just to keep balance in my life but i think that's the best way to do anything you know especially like martial art with with weightlifting anything isolated uh, do the same thing on each side and there's balance now back to uh, the album dystopia obviously this album features uh, chris adler uh yeah. of- infamous uh, drummer for Lamb of God. Uh, talk to me about that relationship, how that happened, and also how he influenced uh, the sound of this record. Chris and I have known each other for a little while. After Gigantor, we uh, had become friends, and, and he was really close with David Ellison. Uh, Dave's really uh, outgoing and gregarious with a lot of these bands where I'm a little more reclusive. And uh, he became really close friends with Chris, and, and when the opportunity came up for us to, to do this transition with... Um, uh, having Chris come in and play a session on the 
record, you know, we didn't plan on him being in the band. We planned on him just you know, doing a session and then just continuing to hunt to find somebody. Because I really didn't know how much longer I was going to keep going with the injury with my neck and everything. Sure. But when Chris came into the band and when we found Kiko, it was like, damn, man, you know what? Soldier on. If you know, It hurts, it hurts. Just keep going because the band plays great now and you love these guys. And, and that's truly the, what you're going to see tonight up on stage is that there's there's a feeling between Kiko and, and me and David that you haven't seen with us up on the stage with the strings for a while, you know? Right. It's, Some it's, people would argue cool since you and really Marty. you're good at something and like you're doing doubles tennis... But right. when you're secretively wanting to serve into the back of that dude's head on your team, right, you know, right, yeah, you know something's wrong. Right. Uh, to uh, step back, let's see. Uh, we're just talking about Adler. Um, oh, uh, in the past, you have. Uh, I mean, whether it be lyrically speaking or even uh, uh, in with the way that you uh, portray yourself in the media, uh, very political. You know, a lot of lyrical content, and certainly, especially earlier on. What's going on in the political scene right now that uh, kind of got you fired up or you know passionate about it? I mean, you've done rock the vote. You've been so much a part of the political scene. Uh, uh, especially for us metalheads. So where are you at right now? Well, because people put words in my mouth and say that I endorse people that I don't, like the last time when they said I endorsed Rick Santorum, and I don't, right. and I didn't. And I, I thought Rick was a nice guy because he had left the campaign trail to go be with his sick daughter. Ah, uh, okay. That's right. all I said. I said that right. I thought it was cool that he left to go be with his daughter because she has that crazy disease where one of the... Uh, um, she's missing a chromosome or something, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, out of me saying that I thought he was a good dad, now all of a sudden I'm supporting this guy from Pennsylvania who I don't know anything about. Right. So, I, you know, I stopped saying so. I still have my opinion about politics. Sure. Right now, what we have, you know, if you want to know how things are going to look, it's going to be real simple to boil it down. You want to know what being with Bernie Sanders would look like? Look at Venezuela. If you want to know what being with Hillary Clinton will look like, it'll be more of the same. If you don't want either one of those things, the other choice is going to be uh, Donald Trump. Now, I think that because the fact that Hillary may be going, uh, oh, may, may be unable to you know, run for office because of her uh, criminal proceedings that are look like they're going to take place. Sure. Um, you know, it looks like the the Democratic Party is getting some people ready. Like in the background, you hear rumblings like Jennifer Warren and and you know Joe Biden still kind of hovering around and stuff like that. And the same thing, it's like why did Mitt Romney all of a sudden start talking up again? I mean, he's, right. he's more outgoing right now against Donald Trump than he was against Barack Obama. Sure, sure. You know, so um, but I mean that's your political fodder for me. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. I'm just going to tell you be sure and vote. This is your country, and and if you don't if you don't vote, then don't bitch. Is there any political issues or social issues in particular that are uh, more important to you uh, or that like maybe aren't getting the amount of media attention that they should? I'm not going to ask you who you're going to yeah, vote for, right? But yeah. I mean, I just there, things there's that... There's all kinds of issues. You know, you don't have enough time here and I don't have, I don't have enough time to explain my position so people won't, you know, start saying I'm, I'm nuts and I should go to Siberia. Right, right. You know, and I think that's one of the bummers about a lot of people when they hear somebody's opinion, they won't listen to why that person has that opinion. So for me, I don't usually get up on a soapbox and talk about any one particular person. I like to encourage people to think for themselves and look into stuff. You know, if you don't, if you don't like what I'm saying, don't don't necessarily say that I'm wrong for what I'm saying. See for yourself. You know. And it seems a lot of times that uh, there, there's no discussion involved anymore. It's a lot of uh, uh, insulting. You know, like if your opinion yeah, differs from mine, it's just I'm gonna come at you and call you a dumbass because I I, I think that yeah. your opinion is stupid. You but know. The funny thing is, like if you look back at the track record that I have, a lot of the stuff that I've said has come true. <laughs> so, I mean, do I get to sit back and say, you know, bite me because I was right? No, right. I'm not that dude. You know, I, I'm I'm pretty much more like you know, let's all really use our experience to make sure that other people don't do the dumb stuff that we've done growing up. You know, it's like that saying that, you know, oh, a uh, smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So, you know what, to our, your listeners, you know, uh, find somebody that you look up to that's got it going on and so he's successful and, you know, doesn't seem like a dumbass. And, and you see if the guy will, or gal will mentor you and, and help and encourage you to be a better person because I believe we're right on the cusp of something super fantastic that's going to happen in our nation right now. I think that this election is going to have um, explosive repercussions uh, in, in one way or the other. And if it doesn't go the right way, um, America is going to be in a lot of trouble. But uh, everybody needs to remember this number. It's uh, Article 25. 
Fair yeah. enough. Now, uh, after writing so many records, I mean, Megadeth, obviously, like a huge, uh, uh, a legendary band, especially in the thrash metal community, metal community alone. Uh, what are you listening to right now that helps to inspire you to c continue to write through, you know, thrash metal for the most part, or even metal music? The last record I was listening to, uh, I was listening to some Mustache. Um, you know, we were listening to some bands we were checking out for our, our next run. We're going to go through the States uh, at the end of the year, about September, October period. And uh, we were looking for another band to add to that bill. So uh, there, there were several bands we were looking at that were just kind of like listening and not really getting into a whole record of people. Mm. But, you know, like... Death Angels has a new record out that we were looking at. Uh, Great Ghost's record. Ghost's new record. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of really good stuff out there right now. And we're hoping that when we do this thing in September, we'll be able to, because we've already got um, you know, four of the five bands picked out. We're really excited with who they are. You will be you, too. You don't, you don't when wanna... I can tell you when I, when I can tell you, I will. I promise. Oh, I thought maybe I was gonna get a turbo exclusive. All right, man. Uh, look, back to Chris Adler real quick. You know, we were talking about him and his relationship with the band. Is it fair to say that he is an official, like you know, solid uh, member of Megadeth now, or is this kind of where we just still kind of feeling it out? What's the date? Today is the 27th, I believe. Ask me after June 25th. After June 25th? Yeah. All right, we'll start a clock on the website, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thank you so much, you man. I, I really you appreciate it. It's not a hotter freaking booth. It is you. a little warm. Uh, I do have to say, uh, as a quick side note, uh, uh, if I could, uh, Nick Mans, obviously, uh, you know, we just lost him, uh, you know, yeah. not this past Saturday, but before that. Uh, do you have a favorite memory about him? Something you would like, you know, fans of, of Nick Menza and uh, Megadeth to know? Something that'd be, you know, kind of cool? A nice little nugget, if you will? Well, there's a lot of great things. Like, you know, his mom is Sicilian and his dad's Italian, and, and for Christmas they wouldn't make ham or turkey, and for Thanksgiving they'd always make <laughs> Italian food. Right. So we'd have, like, pasta and Italian sausages and stuff like that for thing, for Christmas, and you'd go over there, and, and it was all mangiare, mangia, 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 you know? Nice. And his dad was the guy that did the theme song for the Pink Panther. Oh, okay, uh, wow. Did not know that. Yeah, wow. Right. Very cool. So uh, those were all really cool things. I think probably the funniest thing was uh, when um, we'd gone into Paris and, and Nick had um, met some uh, girl guy girl. Oh, oh. Obviously he didn't know <laughs> until after the fact. No, but uh, you know he he was a very good, outgoing, funny, funny dude. So he he was one of the sillier ones I remember in watching yeah. some of the Megadeth videos that uh, yeah. came out, like when you guys were recording New Euthanasia. Even him with the in the truck, you know, doing a little yeah, skeleton thing. Yeah, he loved doing silly stuff right. like that. So very cool, man. Well, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I can't wait uh, for the show tonight. And uh, you too. tonight at midnight, I'm rocking uh, Rust in Peace in its entirety, man. Thank you. Yeah, we absolutely. Love that. Very cool. Again, Dave Mustaine, Rock 100.5 KATT, the cat at Rock, Oklahoma, 2016.